Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. And today I come up with some questions which is basically mapped with a think like a manager aspect. Thanks for sharing a great response uh, on my previous video. This video is little bit special from the previous video because even you read the book, even you read the notes, you know. But when you come to the question practice and all that, it is very important for you to understand how to answer the question, how to analyze the question. What was your thought process? And that is the reason I'm here. In this video, we're going to discuss around 20 questions, which basically give you the visibility about how to think like a manager. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can check my LinkedIn profile. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, first coffee shot. See, whenever you get a question where the word is greatest, first of all, let me explain you what is greatest. So when you see the term in question, which is basically has a word called greatest. Greatest is basically mean it means you have to evaluate the option which determines which one has a highest impact or significance. Okay, highest impact and significance. It means we have to select that option which can cover everything. So in this question, we're talking about in the context of enterprise risk management, which of the following would be considered the greatest risk to the organization information security. If you see option A, phishing attack that target low level employees, it is a risk, no doubt in that. Because by phishing, we can able to gain access. That is a risk. Lack of regularly tested disaster recovery plan, it is a risk. Because you create a plan, if you don't test the plan in the case of impact, we follow the plan blindly. Option C is outdated antivirus software on employee workstation. That is also risk because there's a possibility we can able to trigger the virus in the system. And option D is occasionally lapse in a physical security at the data center. That is also there. All four are basically a risk, but the greatest because phishing attack low level, we can able to manage. We'd have a less impact. Outdated antivirus software in employee workstations, not server that can be managed. Occasional lapse, we can validate, but lack of regularly tested disaster recovery plan is a biggest concern because disaster recovery plan will be activated in the case of major impact. Okay. And if the plan is not working effectively and in the case of crisis, we need to move server, we need to protect people. It will not work. So use of, use of the term greatest in this question prompt you to identify the risk which has a highest impact. Okay. Highest impact on the risk management. Okay, while all the options are legitimate risks, but the absence of disaster recovery plan that is regularly tested could have a catastrophic consequences for the organization. And it is potentially leading to a significant data loss, downtime and financial reputation damage also that could be threaten your company. And if you don't have a lack, if you don't have a plan tested, even you're doing a phishing attack during that, that disaster doesn't work. Okay, so that is the reason answer is basically B. So in the case of greatest, we have to select that option which cover everything. Okay. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Let's discuss the another question, which is in terms of greatest. Given the complexity introduced by cloud services include data sovereignty, shared responsibility model, and the potential for scale, which of the following represent the greatest concern for maintaining a security of sensory data. See, first, let me explain you cloud is something which is heavily nowadays testable in CSUM. Now here the keyword is data sovereignty. So data sovereignty basically talking about the physical location of data on papers and on the documents. Shared responsibility, always remember as a customer, you are responsible for the data security. You are responsible for the governance and, uh, and you also responsible for the compliance. So if you take an example here, um, suppose this is the customer we have. So he came to the bank. Bank is basically using a cloud solution. Okay. So bank basically collect the data from the customer. Okay. And based on that, he basically use the cloud application and store data in the cloud. 
Tomorrow, any security breach happen in the cloud, it is a bank who answerable to customer. It is a bank who answerable to regulatory authority. So they can transfer the responsibility, but they cannot transfer the accountability. Now, question basically saying greatest concern for maintaining a security of sensor data. Loss of control over sensor data is a greatest concern, no doubt. Location of data store in the cloud is also, but that can be addressable with the help of contract. Potential for unauthorized access to encrypted data. But if it's an encrypted data, it's not a concern actually. But still, if cloud can able to retrieve the data, it's a concern. And risk of data being evenly deleted, that is also a concern. See, if you see the option B and option C, okay, they both are basically related to the A. If you have a loss of control over sensitive data, you can't able to maintain further encrypted data or inadvertently deleted data. Always remember one thing, whenever you store it and get in the cloud, any question talking on most effective way, a greatest effective way to secure the data, always remember encryption because default you don't have a control over the cloud. And one of the biggest concern with the cloud is basically lack of control. And that somehow managed with the help of con uh, contract, which include your right to audit laws. So in this case, the greatest concern is basically control over the sensitive data. Okay because it addresses the core issue of losing a control over the sensor data within the cloud computing model. And the loss of control is a direct consequences of navigating a shared responsibility model. And where there's a delineation of a security responsibility between the cloud service provider and the client can lead to the gap in data governance, security practice, and ultimately data sovereignty. So if you don't have A, you cannot control the data sovereignty you cannot control the shared responsibility. You cannot control the potential for scalability. That is why A is considered as a great test concern. Let's move to the next question. Okay. So we already discussed our so answer is basically A. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Now this time we're talking about the question which is focused on the word called first. Whenever the question has a word first, it means the question talking about sequence. You know, what is the first step in the risk management? What is the first step in the BIA? What is the first action you do? So whenever the question talking about first, it typically asks for the sequence. Okay, let me note down here. It will always ask for the sequence. Okay, or steps. So here the question is, what is the first action an information security manager should take when notify of an unauthorized data breach? See, one thing always remember is uh, information security manager is the first one who basically get the information about the incident. Okay. According to CISM. So option A notify the law enforcement. Definitely. That is true. Conduct risk assessment. Uh, that is also true. Activate the incident response team. That is also true. Reduce the impact to an acceptable level. That is not true because that is an outcome of the risk management. So de eliminate before I notify law before I conduct a risk assessment, sorry, before I conduct a risk assessment, okay, on the risk and activate the incident response team and all that. First, I need to go for C. First, I will activate the incident response team. They will validate, respond to the incident. And then according to reporting phase, next step after that is notify the respective authority. And then on the overall incident, we conduct a risk assessment. Okay. Because question was specifically talking about the first action information security manager does. So the term first air is crucial because it set the priority for immediate action. While all the options are part of a response plan, the activation of incident response team is a first step in managing a situation and this team will then determine the subsequent steps such as risk assessment, system isolation and law enforcement notification. So let's move to the next question. Thank you. Another interesting question and this question again talk about first but in this we also going to assess the context of assess the risk. See, sometimes what happens when we go against the policy, when we go against the norm, before we implement anything, we assess the risk of non-compliance. Let me explain you with the example. Now, company want to want to have, company have a policy which basically ensure every data must be protect with the encryption. Now, regulatory want data in a plain text. According to policy, whatever the data we will send outside of the domain, it should be sent in an encrypted order. But regulatory want the data in a plain text. So how to handle this? So always remember, whenever we go against the compliance, we assess the risk of non-compliance first. That is a first step always. Okay. So here the question says that during the new application migration, you discovered some gaps associated with the regulatory requirement. 
while remediation is necessary the business unit lack the budget which of the following should information security manager do first say question say first option a notify legal team the non compliant legacy application that is true option b take approval from senior management on risk acceptance that is also true assess the risk of non compliance that is also true and update the risk register see update the risk register will be done by the after approval from the management okay so d removed notify the legal team the non compliant legacy application that is not a first step so that is removed take a approval from a senior management on risk acceptance but we need to first present the risk right what is it is so answer is basically c so first assess the risk of non compliance okay then take an approval from a risk management or risk acceptance then update the risk register and notify the legal team for the non compliance legacy applications but we can able to send things if it against the policy but first we have to assess the risk of non compliance okay because question was talking about first so always remember whenever we going against the compliance we assess the risk of non compliance first okay let's move to the next question thank you another interesting question which of the following is the first step required for building a effective risk management in the organization again the question document first step in building effective risk management in the organization option a understanding of the organization threat vulnerability risk profile which is true okay option b understanding of risk exposure potential consequences of the compromise that only get when you compromise the threat exploit the vulnerability option c is organization risk management strategy organization sorry risk mitigation strategy which is one of the treatment okay that will be done only after analysis of the risk or identification of risk so that is not a first step d kri kri will be come into the picture once you mitigate once you treat the risk and you monitoring the risk based on a kri so question talking about the first step so that's why the answer is understanding of the organization threat vulnerability risk profile and always remember risk management ultimate goal is to reduce the risk to an acceptable level and create a value for the business as a question talking about first with the sequence that is why we went with the answer a let's move to the next question another interesting question which of the following is a first step in a classification process classification can be data classifications process classifications and all that option a locate and identify information resource which is true option b cost of control cost of control will be come into the picture when we know the value of the asset so this is eliminate option c risk assessment that will be do against the list of asset and option d is asset value definitely we need to know the value of asset but without know the what is the asset we cannot able to calculate the value simple is if you don't have a phone you don't know the value of the phone so first we need to know the inventory of the phone inventory of server so first step is basically identify locate the asset second is basically map the asset value and then based on that we do risk assessment and then we determine the control requirement so that is why the answer is a for alpha let's move to the next question thank you actually it is a very interesting question because in this we going to test about most now most this is a term is looking for an answer that actually outweigh outweigh other terms outweigh other terms okay we look for the quantity okay we look for the significance okay we look for the degree let's say example most of the people go to goa okay so here we talking about the quantity most important thing for a policy implementation is senior management support so here the question say that whenever you see the question specifically most we have to select that option which basically outweigh other in terms in terms of quantity significance or degree example which of the following is a most effective control of data security in the cloud answer is encryption there is no alternative of that which of the following is a most effective way to measure the security of any training increase in the incident reports which of the following is a most effective way to most effective most objective of the risk management process reduce the risk to an acceptable level so whenever the word most is there it means there is no alternate so here the question say which of the following security control is a most effective in preventing data leakage through email most effective preventing data option a anti spam filter but that is more from a incoming monitoring perspective dlp definitely basically ensure the data should not leave in an unauthorized manner option c digital certificate for email encryption that is more from a data security point of view 
and D is basically called as a regular security awareness training for employees. We cannot trust their human stupidity. All are great, but the most important part is B because we have a control here which is dedicatedly to ensure data should not live in unauthorized manner. Okay, and this is the most direct you can consider the effectiveness of a control specifically for preventing a data leakage. So any question in the exam talking about data leakage, either encryption is the answer in the cloud or DLP is the second answer. All options could contribute to the overall security, but DLP solutions are designed to detect the potential data breach, data exfiltration transmission and prevent them by monitoring, detecting, blocking, sensitive data in use, transit and all that. That's the reason answer is B for beta. Okay, let's move to the next question. Okay, another interesting question. Which of the following is the most useful? for information security professional to build for business continuity. So out of following, which is the most? See, here the scope is basically business continuity. Business continuity is basically deal with the availability. It means how to maintain the, or how to sustain the business in the case of disaster. So we're directly talking about the, um, we're directly talking about the availability. Now, definitely in the case of disaster, we cannot able to protect everything. Okay, and the keyword is basically talking about the word called most. So we have to select that which is basically quantity, significance and degree. So BI is definitely help you to prioritize the recovery strategy because BI help you to prioritize what is important, what is not. And based on that, we can able to create a recovery strategy. So BI makes sense. Risk assessment also makes sense because risk assessment basically help me to identify the threat, vulnerability and uh, likelihood impact. It also helped me to calculate the level of risk because risk assessment is all about identifying of the risk, analysis of the risk and uh, evaluating of the risk. Gap analysis is basically used to identify current state and desired state. Lack of visibility does not make sense. So now the question is from a business content perspective, what is the best answer? So answer is basically BIA. I'll tell you why. See, if you see the description here, okay. If you see the description, BIA will basically tell, let me delete this. So if you basically see the perspective, BIA will basically tell, um, give me a second, let me, okay. So BIA will basically tell us about potential incidents and any related business impact, where the risk calculate the probability of compromise and BIA determine the consequences of the compromise. Okay, so let's take example, we have a system A, we have a system B, okay. This is something we have introduced as a data center. Now we identify the threat is earthquake can be occur, flood can be occur. And because of that server can be down because of the lack of BCP and all that. So here we have an impact one and we have an impact. Two. So impact visibility we get in risk assessment, but which impact we need to treat, which impact is critical, how to prioritize that come from the BIA because BIA help you to prioritize. So risk assessment is part of the BIA. Now, BIA ultimately create a report the stakeholder used to understand the business impact. Now question is gap analysis. Now what happens is when we do the risk assessment, we decided the control we need to implement. So to implement the control, we need to understand what is the current state of control and what is the disaster. There we do the gap assessment. When we identify the critical first impact, when we identify the first impact and we'll see the current impact and desired impact based on that, we need to do gap assessment. So there also we're doing a gap analysis process. So gap analysis we do in the BIA also. Okay, gap analysis we do in the risk assessment also and based on that we prioritize the function. Okay, but whenever the question is specifically talking about from business continuity perspective, answer is basically BIA. BIA is the ultimate result we provide to the management. Based on that, we can able to take a decision. Okay, so let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. So next coffee shot. When determining the most suitable recovery strategy, which of the following is the most important to consider ensuring the selected approach effectively mitigate potential disruptions and also align with the organization recovery time objective and financial constraint. It may be looking for a strategy which can be basically meet my recovery time objective and financial constraints. Option A strategy ability to demonstrate address probable even with acceptable recovery time at the reasonable cost, which is true. Option B, the total cost of a recovery capability is the cost of preparing for possible disruption, which is not a true strategy. Ability demonstrate address are probable even with the maximum recovery time at reasonable cost. If you go for maximum recovery time, it lead to the new risk. And option D, redundant mirror system to ensure the high degree of system and process resilience and robustness. But that is basically increase more cost. So question talking about looking for the recovery strategy. 
okay and for that what is the most important parameter see when we go for any kind of a recovery strategy or when we go for any kind of a control we always look for the reasonable cost and that is the reason answer is a for alpha okay c also makes sense but c say the maximum recovery time why we have to wait for more time okay which increase more risk why we need to increase the more downtime so we always look for the balance approach that is the reason answer is basically a for alpha let's move to the next question which of the following is the most effective control to prevent the social engineering attack so here the keyword is most and effective for preventing a social engineering social engineering is basically misguiding and collecting the information option is strong firewall but that is more from a network point of view okay you have a strong firewall here and uh, strong firewall is basically more about preventing technical functions example like if there is a user here he working on the system firewall can basically block packet so someone is trying to send the packet firewall can be blocked but what about the person call that person if hacker basically call the person so firewall will not be the effective one multi factor authentication definitely it's a good thing because he enter the username password then he get the otp that is a multi factor authentication that is also effective control security awareness training that is also important but in the multi factor one concern is if i basically call that person i ask him for a password and i also told him give me the otp so in that case multi factor is also not make sense until unless i don't provide them awareness training so i make them awareness about this kind of an activity i make them aware about their responsibility toward the organization i think that is make more sense right and last is basically called as a strong policy just creating a policy cannot able to prevent the attack so whenever you get any kind of a question talking on most effective control for preventing a social engineering attack or phishing attack the answer is security awareness training because that is how you can able to improve the behavior of the people is it clear that's why the answer is basically c for charlie let's move to the next question which of the following is the most again most we have to look for the one which cover everything most important requirement in developing a security strategy see when we talking about developing a security strategy okay so we have a four options understand the policy second is understanding a business objectives risk assessment data and approval of senior management now question say most again we have to select that which cover everything see if you go by policy policy is a statement okay after creating a strategy we create a policy so question say developing which is another thing you need to look for the english so developing is present tense it means they are in a stage of developing they are not developed yet okay so if you see the hierarchy how the hierarchy work like so first we have a business vision based on the business vision we basically create a business strategy based on a business strategy we basically define the business objectives okay business objective is basically drive the it strategy it strategy basically instruct the security a uh, security strategy and security strategy is basically instruct the security policy security policy is basically instruct the security program which include my risk management incident management and all that and then we create a standard and metrics question say developing so this definitely a removed business objective definitely based on a business objective only we create a security strategy okay makes sense risk assessment data until as we don't have information security strategy and information security program we can't do anything so risk assessment data is removed approval of senior management oh, sorry for the spelling so senior management is basically come into the picture when you develop the strategy we are in a stage of developing that is where the answer is understanding a business objective based on a business objective we create a it strategy based on a it strategy we create a information security strategy based on the information security strategy we create a policy program standard and procedure okay that's the reason answer is basically b for beta let's move to the next important point okay so let's move to the next coffee shot which of the following site best appropriate for a shortest rto now here the keyword is basically talking about best now question is in which condition we select the answer if the word is best see the best is a term asking for a most suitable or effective option or action among the choice given and it is often a subjective based on a given scenario so whenever you trying to fix the particular issue in that case we select based on a best let's example most people go to goa but the best is basically stay at home 
because of cost effective so whenever the word best is here we have to select a particular option which can fix other options okay example which of the following is the best approach to ensure compliance with the new privacy regulation business requirement so best is a keyword we have to use in that condition when we need to fix the particular issue okay what is the best way to handle this situation you know the most important thing while building a policy is understanding a business requirement and best way to convey is security policies by the management approval so best is basically used for the particular condition and here the question say that which of the following side best appropriate for the shortest rto it mean we're looking for the shortest rto mean as soon as possible we have to restore so we have a option a is hot site definitely hot site has a people process servers partial data but to move data then and only it can work warm site they don't have a server we need to move server then we need to move data so it will take more time so far hot site looks same warm site i'm eliminating because it take more time to move servers and data it will not offer definitely compared to less rt than hot site mirror site is real time it is also called redundant site active active mobile site is basically movable movable from one location to the location it have a partial data so best for the rto so we left with hot site and mirror site but if you compare the mirror site is more like an active active so it take uh, less time okay to restore the services compared to hot site because hot site is we need to update the data then it operate within a 2 hour or 1 hour but mirror site is immediately that is why if you're looking for a short test rto the answer is basically mirror site how let me explain you if the question say redundant site so in that case in both location we have a data server rack and power in the case of hot site we don't have a real time data but we have a server we have a rack and we have a power and water in warm site we don't have a data we don't have a server okay and uh, we don't have a rack we ha we have a rack server we don't have a server on that we, ha we have a rack we have a network and all that but we don't have a we have a power and water but in the case of cold site we don't have anything except power and water so in the warm site we need to move server okay so according to that the answer is basically c okay so next coffee shot which of the following would best assist management in determining the resource needed to adequately mitigate the risk of a data breach to organization now here the keyword is basically best according to situation we need to fix and determine the resource so two keywords are there one is basically we need a resource what resource best we have to use to mitigate the risk okay option a audit report audit report definitely it give you visibility about audit controls and all that but that is not a best way we can use to convince the manual on mitigating risk bia is basically use a risk analysis data give you the visibility impact and also give you visibility that okay which impact we need to treat first which impact is critical for the company risk analysis only help you to calculate the risk okay we are not moved to the risk evaluation we are in a risk analysis stage so we can able to see the level of risk we can get a visibility of the impact but which impact we need to reduce first that information of risk analysis go in the bia internal audit is basically more from the control perspective okay so the best way we can tell them okay this basically have a more impact this basically have a less impact this impact is more priority for me this impact is a less priority for me so according to that we need to invest money that is why bia is basically the best answer because bia basically help you to prioritize which impact we need to treat first and which impact we need to treat later let's move to the next question which metrics best be established for incident management should be presented to senior management as a basis of justification of continuous support and funding so first keyword is best second keyword is presented to the senior management and third is continuous support and funding so option a kpi option b csf option c kri and option d sla see kpi is basically talk about the performance indicators which talk about the control effectiveness and all that csf is basically the another thing which is called critical success factor kri basically talk about key risk indicator which talk about what is a parameter because of which we could not able to, able to achieve the kpi and sla is a matrix we are dealing with the party and all that so keyword is basically if you want to justify a continuous support and funding we can able to only justify for continuous support funding is when you show your how the incident management working effectively so normally what happen we set the goals okay to achieve the goal we set the kpi okay now to achieve the kpi we basically have a success factor 
and if you could not able to achieve success factor what is the reason for that what is the intuition that is called kri let's say example i convey the management i want a strong incident management team and that incident management team will close every ticket in 2 days okay every ticket need to be closed in 2 days so out of 1000 incidents okay 250 incidents we able to close in 2 days so here we have a 25% of kpi we have achieved because kpi was in 2 days we have to close the incident but out of 1000 incident only 250 incidents close in 2 days now 75% we could not able to achieve our kpi now what it can be multiple reason people not come to the office that is a key risk key risk indicator because we need a skillful people if we don't have a skillful people we cannot able to close the ticket so kpi is basically include the kri it includes csf also that is the reason answer is kpi so whenever question okay talking about kpi kpi primary goal is to show the efficiencies and effectiveness and goal achievement so whenever we convey the management on any process after implementation through the kpi only we can able to show them kgi basically portray the management goal and kri basically use for measuring the risk once you identify and treat the risk after that with the help of kri only we can able to validate so that is why in this case kpi is the best answer so always remember whenever you convey business whenever you convey management about any initiative in the organization with the help of kpi only we convey that is the reason answer is basically a for alpha let's move to the next question thank you in which stage of incident response function we best determine the root cause of the incident so here the question talking about the root cause question talking about scoping it mean so sometimes the questions talk about scoping so we have to select that option which cover that scoping it mean it consists in which particular phase so option a containment option b eradication option c identification option d lesson learn so when you talking about any system is basically infected with the virus and all that containment is a stage where we isolate a system okay containment is stage we basically isolate a system containment is a stage where we isolate a system the system is infected with the virus after confirming we isolate a system we don't have a time to do root cause there once you isolate now you have a time you can remove the virus and everything which is called as eradication identification is basically where you receive a ticket and lesson learn is basically where you identify to improve the process so the best time to do root cause analysis when you isolated a system that's called eradication okay we can do as early as possible but the best in which particular stage the question talking about scope it must be done in eradication how to remember preparation is a stage where we develop the incident response okay it is something before occurring of incident it is more like a governance when we receive a ticket first thing we need to confirm the ticket so that something is basically identification stage and always remember the first person after incident management team receive the ticket and confirm the ticket they notify the information security manager and it is a information security manager only who notify everyone then next is basically isolate a system update the firewall rule that is called as a containment okay then we have a eradication eradication is basically where we determine the root cause because we don't have a time during a containment okay because we have isolate a system remove the system from the network and identify the root cause and remove that particular root cause to make sure it should not infected again so problem management also come in the eradication stage then we have a recovery where we restore the affected system within a defined sdo so here we involve the bia and according to bia we will prioritize which system need to be restored first and finally we have a lesson learn lesson learn is basically understand about how to improve the overall incident management process so containment is called as a corrective control recovery is basically called as a permanent control okay so that is a thing let's move to the next coffee shot thank you another interesting question when establishing an information security governance framework what is the main objective see two things are there establishing it mean present tense we have not established yet okay so question talking about the present tense present tense okay information security governance framework what is the main objective so question talking about outcome question is not talking about what is consists question document outcome so when you establishing information security governance what is the main objective option a define security roles and responsibility definitely there because the keyword is basically main the word point is main is alternate word is called as a primary also okay okay main word is mean what is a primary option a define security role that is not a primary role of adopting a governance framework ensure compliance with legal regulatory that is true 
but only legal regulatory will be the case if the question talking must if it's you know when you adopt adopting a information security governance frame what must be follow in the case of must answer is basically compliance because that's something we cannot skip to align information security with business objective makes sense implementing technical control that is also true a and d is a secondary b is part of a c ultimate goal to achieve the business objective which cover your regulatory so we select that option which can cover other option okay so the correct answer is basically align the information security with business objective because the word main here is there and for the primary purpose of governance firm framework while other options are component of governance framework the main objective to ensure the information security strategy should support the goals and objective that is why making option 3 is basically the comprehensive choice okay let's move to the next question thank you it's a very interesting question which of the following is the main reason of using a configuration management see configuration management is basically provide the uniformity because if you don't have a configuration management process then what happen is we don't have a uniformity so let's say example we have a system a we have a system b we have a system c now each system is running with a different configuration and tomorrow if we find any kind of a vulnerability first we need to discover that vulnerability right first we need to discover that vulnerability to discover the vulnerability first we need to locate the system which take time so that's why i want to bring the uniformity that okay we have one configuration for this group of system we have one configuration for this system what is the advantage we get fastest way to discover and deploy the things and when you having a uniformity it is easy to perform the automation ha huh. any kind of a changes in the configuration it need to go through a change management process so that is why change management ensure unauthorized change should not introduce configuration management ensure that okay appropriate configuration need to be maintained patch management ensure that new releases up to date there and there's no vulnerability should be there but the question talking about here is main reason of using configuration option a provide consistency in security control which is true until unless you don't have a uniformity you cannot able to apply the control reduce the error during upgrades that is not a primary okay to provide centralized administration it is it is also one of the important thing allow for objective pass or fail decision which is not true because it's not make sense to the option so d removed centralized administration definitely there okay reduce error during a upgrades also we removed now we left with a and b now to provide centralized administration we need a consistency because select the option na so main reason main reason is basically centralized administration is definitely there but without consistency that is not possible so configuration management providing a consistency that is why we have a centralized administration that is the reason answer is a ha huh, keyword say best then answer is basically become c understood so how one word can change the answer so question talking about the requirement okay so let's move to the next question thank you another interesting question in the context of managing third party vendor contract to ensure the security program and process of third party align with the associate control of the organization security program the contract must include the following elements now question talking must now must is basically called as a mandatory and scoping is basically what is consist so we have to select that option which basically cover the other options is it clear so option a right to audit option b notification tree option c escalation matrix and option d termination criteria see to verify the termination criteria to verify the escalation matrix and to verify the notification right to audit is required until unless you don't have a right to audit so example like this is basically your customer okay and this is basically your vendor okay so when your customer is dealing with the vendor and vendor is basically providing services in the special in the case of cloud you have a very limited visibility so with the help of audit you can able to validate the control effectiveness okay that is why always remember whenever you're dealing with third party you have your program they have a program make sure that program and the control should be aligned with the requirement you address everything in the contract but to make sure writing it does not mean it happens we need to go look and verify to validate that we need to do the audit and that is why in the contract we need to add the right to audit clause and that is the reason answer is basically because with the help of right to audit clause you can validate the escalation matrix you can validate the controls and you can also define that termination criteria that is the reason answer is basically a for alpha okay let's move to the next question thank you 
ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द एक्शन प्लान टू एग्जीक्यूट द स्ट्रैटेजी स्ट्रैटेजी इज अ इंफॉर्मेशन सिक्योरिटी स्ट्रैटेजी लाइक यू वॉन्ट टू इम्प्लीमेंट द यू वॉन्ट टू एग्जीक्यूट द स्ट्रैटेजी इन द ऑर्गनाइजेशन इफ यू हैव अ स्ट्रैटेजी यू वॉन्ट टू एग्जीक्यूट सो हाउ टू डू दैट वट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग विदाउट दैट थिंग्स डजेंट वर्क ऑप्शन ए पॉलिसी डेफिनेटली पॉलिसी इज अ फाउंडेशन स्टैंडर्ड is definitely provide uniformity but without policy you can't implement the standard gap analysis we already did that's why we are in stage of strategy okay exception process will be the case when we going for deviation so answer is basically policy because policy is a foundation to implement the strategy in the organization okay that is the reason answer is basically a let's move to the next question thank you an enterprise now this time the question is talking about governance it mean the question testing the governance process so enterprise is considering whether to allow employee to use bring your own device for the business purpose acceptance is facilitated by the information security manager applying the common business case aspect throughout the acceptance process which of the following primary factor in senior management decisions see whenever we deploying or initiating any kind of a solutions and all that we always remember business case is play a very important role because business case provide the value business case provide justification business case include the gap analysis and risk report data and that is something we convey to the management to give them a value why this particular solution is required so option a identify budget item so that senior management can quantify the cost which is true that is required option b monitoring auditing measures but that is not a primary factor option c risk assessment details definitely we need to know what is the risk associated with if we go for the uh, bovid and all that bring your device because here we talking about bring your device so if you going to introduce there is a risk is there definitely we need to present and aligning a security objective with business objective definitely a and c is part of a d only which you present in the business case that is the reason answer is d anything which is map with the business objective we have a higher chance to get an acceptance from the management and that is basically include in the business case so anything we have to follow it should be follow top down approach that is the reason answer is d for delta okay let's move to the next question okay so another interesting question is which of the following is the what you called um, primary challenge in developing a incident management plan okay so we are in a stage of present tense option a lack of management buy in makes sense imt member turnover is also required lack of communication process yes when you implementing complex and wide plan this is come into the picture when you implementing all seem to be good but primary challenge is if you don't have a management support you can't implement anything okay if you have a management support you can able to manage the imt member turnover you can have a good communication you can make the complex also easy easy and things so that's where the most important part the primary thing what is a concern is primary is first again it's a governance issue lack of support of senior management you can't implement policy you can't implement any kind of a program function until unless it is not aligned with the business so answer is basically a a for alpha let's move to the next question the design and implementation of a risk management process in an organization will be influenced by which of the following most important factor but again the keyword is most second is influence it mean drive okay so option a culture option b mission and objective option c organization structure and option d product and services we eliminating product service because that's more like an operational so that is gone organization structure is very very important no doubt in that we need to interpret the mission also b and c is more about the data that you collect but in which company you are implementing what is the culture of accepting the things that is the most important part even i ignore the a they have a good mission objective they have a great organization structure but they don't have acceptance of a risk they don't have a management of the risk culture of norming things it doesn't work so most important thing which influence any kind of a design implementation because include it, it include about the decision factor and that is where the culture basically play a very important role without that bcd will be ineffective okay so that is where the most important thing for implementing security in the company's culture any kind of a initiatives you need especially from a risk management information security program culture is required because if you don't have a culture of acceptance they will not implement that is the reason answer is basically a let's move to the next question thank you what is the primary goal of the information security program again the question talking primary and again question talking about outcome option a achieve the business goal which is true keep the downtime and cost low that is also true 
Option C, reduce risk to an acceptable level. That is also true. And D is regulatory compliance. That is also true. See, if you see C, C is a primary goal of a risk management. So C removed. Risk management is a part of information security program only. Keeping downtime and cost low, at, that is also one of the goal. But primary goal is to achieve the business goal. By achieving a business goal, if you can see, achieving a business goal, it include your keeping the downtime, reduce the risk and regulatory compliance. So we selecting that option which can cover other. That is the reason answer is basically A for alpha. So this is all from my side. Do let me know in the comment box, how do you find the video? And if you find this video play a very important role in your passing the exam, please share your result in the comment box, how this particular video was useful for your exam preparation. Um, I will waiting for your comments and based on the comments only I try to improve my content. Please remember one thing. I can see that you have not subscribed to my channel. If you think it is worth do subscribe. I will bring more content like that. And my end goal is to basically provide more awareness in zero cost. Good day. Bye.